Today I'm going to talk about some UK stocks that I'm watching. So this kind of bear market, this stock market crash has really started to creep into some UK stocks. And I thought, you know what, let's talk about some UK stocks, some stocks that I don't own. So uh, for example, Greg's. Now this is one I do own, but I wanted to use this as a bit of an example really. Uh, Greg's is a prime example of what's going on in the UK market right now. It's getting killed. Um, so it's been a while since we were the, the Greg's channel, uh, which was back in kind of uh, early 2020 uh, you guys probably know one of the key stocks that i was buying in the last stock market crash that we had was greg's um it was a stock a, a big fan of it um i'm a big fan of the product um, but as well as that you know the profit growth the revenue growth the potential dividend the balance sheet the management team was great it's a five-star stock so i really did prioritize buying this in the cv dip um and then the weird thing with greg's is actually it dipped it put a little bit of a recovery in for like the next kind of three months and then the strange thing about this is during the CV times, it actually then drops like another 30, 40 percent, which is absolutely insane. Uh, and then it went on a crazy run. And most of you guys probably know that um, a few months ago, I actually sold half my position out for a hundred and thirty percent gain, I think it was. But I still own uh, half of it for because um, I still think the company's going to be OK in the next five years. And I'll also pick a, a pretty good dividend off it. But like Greg's, for example, Greg's is one that's now down 42 percent it's only just slightly above like the CV times. Um, and if it starts getting back in this kind of period here, between this like 1,700 to this, you know, 1,100-ish, I, I could be buying Greg's once again. Um, and that's just a prime example of a company that's uh, doing very well and has had a massive plummet back to nearly the CV prices. And I'm like, well, if that happens, I'll be buying it. Um, as well as, you know, 16 times earnings, picking up a 3% dividend yield it'll be quite a good investment. So that's a prime example of one that I do own uh, that is getting very interesting, but I wanted to talk about some stocks that I don't own, uh, some UK stocks that I don't own. And a uh, few of these come from you guys in the comment section. So, uh, you know, this is why I always say, you know, if there's any stocks you like, comment down below because uh, I end up trying to, well, I sometimes forgot the time, I'll have a quick search of them and uh, I get some good ideas off them. Uh, and which is in particular with number one. Uh, I've seen this mentioned quite a bit in the YouTube comments and it's uh, a little bit popular in the Discord at the moment. Um, and that's Royal Mail. So a lot of people are looking at Royal Mail at the moment and same again, it's a stock that's being killed off massively down 54%. And same again, you know, it's not as much as like the CV lows kind uh, in that big, because it really got hit in the CV times, but it's had a, it's lost half its valuation and it trades down at four times earnings, which it, uh, stock like Royal Mail will never command a high valuation, but four times earnings, you know, <laughs> um, and also look at this 6% dividend yield, which is um, interesting. So yeah, Royal Mail, I, I can see why so many people are interested in it and I can see um, the potential here with this one. The only thing that I'm unsure with Royal Mail is that obviously it's in a, a very competitive market and obviously it's a, in a market where gross margins are, are very razor thin because it's very competitive. But you look at Royal Mail, they're probably always going to have a bit of a monopoly over the letter side of it, even though that is you know decreasing slightly. Uh, but parcel wise, they're actually starting to really ramp up the parcel game quite a bit, which can be uh, quite a good service when you look at the growth of the e-commerce side of it. If Royal Mail kind of, um, you know, I, always, I still think that e-commerce space is really crying out in the UK uh, for a really good delivery of parcels. Uh, as someone that used to run a e-commerce uh, company um, online, um, I can tell you like uh, Hermes, if you use Hermes, they're unbelievably, uh, they're, they're cheap, but the, the service is unbelievably poor. And then anyone else between like Yodel and um, FedEx or anyone on them sort of lines, they are 100% more reliable uh, but their prices are insane, insane prices. So like someone like a Royal Mail, um, if they can fill in the gap between a cheaper price and a, um, a really good service uh, in an e-commerce space here, they'll do very well. Uh, and as well as that, you know, they're a company that which uh, tries and makes sure everyone achieves delivery, you know, uh, some of these remote locations as well. Um, so yeah, I think that, I just noticed there, uh, uh, founder Henry VIII. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, it's. I can see why people are interested in it. Um, obviously, it's got a few problems at the moment with the competition. Obviously, as well with like inflation issues, wage minimum, uh, the, the wage increases. And um, when you look at the uh, you know petrol prices as well, that's obviously going to hit them a fair amount. So 
it was a little bit of um, a tipping point with Royal Mail. It, it could, I think, this could go either way, where it could, be, this could look a really good buy, or potentially could get a little bit cheaper. Um, but I can understand why people are playing this, and I am definitely interested. I don't know if I'll buy it, but I, I can see what the interest is in this one. Next one is Dunelm. So this one actually got voted for on the stock request on the Patreon. Uh, and since that got voted on there and I, I did the video on it, which you guys on the Patreon wouldn't have seen, um, it's got me interested. Uh, you know, it's 10 times earning. Same again, I don't think it'll ever tr trade at ridiculous uh, valuations, but at 10 times, it's not too bad. Uh, it pays a 4.5% dividend yield. I actually think that potential dividend yield has um, more room to get hiked up, which would be uh, absolutely amazing. Um, and when you look at the business side of it, it it's done very well. You know, uh, the profits moved in the in the right direction, as you can see here. Uh, you know, from 2019, it's up nearly 40 million. The revenue, same again, it's moved up in the right direction, nearly uh, 400 million up uh, on the revenue side of it. And the plan is just to carry on increasing the stores. I'm not sure how well it would hold up in a recession environment. Uh, I don't know if it would get really hit by a recession environment. Um, people might up, stop upcycling their homes a lot more, which obviously this company sells a lot of, you know, uh, homeware products. So I don't know if that would affect them. I don't know if that because they're a cheap uh, homeware brand that they still might do okay. Um, the that's the little things that I'm I'm not. Is it? It's an area that I'm not very knowledgeable and confident in, uh, which I always try and stay away from. But at the same time, at 10 times earnings, picking a 4% dividend yield up, I think worst case scenario, we walk away collecting a lovely 4% uh, dividend, which I think will get hiked up uh, in the next few years to around 6%. Um, and also then you have the, the potential share price increase, uh, which obviously you can see here, it's, you know, it's basically back down at nearly CV levels. Um, but you know it's had a you know from 1,400 1, down to you know 700 it's had a, a you know 50% drop on the share price which is is interesting so um this is this is one that I really like because you know it's got a good growth um decent dividend decent valuation I don't think the balance sheet is too bad as well if I remember correctly let me just have a look at the balance sheet yeah, it's, it's paid off all its debt on its balance sheet as well, which is, is fantastic. I think actually it has might have just actually took a bit more back on recently, if I remember correctly. Uh, and it's sitting on 47 million in cash. I mean, it's not bad really at all, is it? So uh, I'm definitely interested in this one. And if you do want to use this platform that I'm using in the videos, it's Simple Wall Street. I've got a link in the description. You join through that link, you also get a 14 day free trial. And on the fifth day, they'll send you a code for 30% off for the year. So yeah, uh, go check that one out. Uh, next up, WH Smith. So I used to own this stock. I sold it out for around about 30, 40%. Um, just after CV times, reinvested it into something else. Um, and it seems like a very good decision. Uh, it's not really done anything since that period of time. Uh, bought it in the CV times, um, and I, I bought it, it must have been somewhere around here, around June time. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of got this little bounce here, and then I thought, okay, I'm gonna move out from this one. But uh, WH Smith is, is interesting, because if you remember pre-CV situation, they were actually, you know, WH Smith is a company you would not associate with actually doing that well. But actually, the turnaround plan was going very well for this company. Uh, they kind of stopped using high street stores and moved into a lot more locations with traffic, like train stations, airports. And the company, if I look here, you can see that the profit and revenue was just starting to turn around in the last couple of years. And then boom, CV comes. Now, it's looking like they could potentially turn that around and the profit and revenue goes back up. And the... The thing is as well is that what, what's going on at the moment, well, you look at airports, airports are busy. You know, people are going back on holiday, train stations are busy. I went to Leeds train station the other day, it was heaving, like trying to get past people was unbelievable. And you're like, well, you know, the traffic's back there. So it should perform quite well. The only problem is, is that after I was doing some prep for this video, I quickly ran some numbers in my head and I thought, it's not, dirt cheap when I actually run the numbers in my head, uh, depending on what growth they're kind of putting. So yeah, I'll, I'll, when I actually ran the numbers on it, I was like, it's actually not as cheap as what I thought it was. But it's also an interesting, you know, it's nowhere near the CV prices that it was at. And I do think it has some upside, but maybe not as much as what I thought. But I think when you consider the situation of the, you know, the, where the, the price is at and the traffic benefit that it's gonna have, could be an interesting one. Not my favorite on the list, but I thought I'd shout that one out. Um, obviously, the Hook Group, we've mentioned this multiple times on the channel. 
Uh, I think this is way beaten down. Uh, I mean, you talk about stocks being down, 86% uh, down at the moment. And I, the thing is with Hook Group, I still think it's a good company. Like, I think they will still do very well. It's got a great moat. It's an e-commerce retailer. Uh, it has its um, on-demand service that it has. It has its uh, selling platform like Shopify. And um, I, I really like this one. And since it had a bit of a bumper because there was rumors that they were going to get bought out, it's, it's kind of giving all that game, gains back now. Um, there's a lot of controversy, controversy around this stock. That's the only reason why I probably haven't bought it. I've already got one with Boohoo. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't blame anyone for taking a punt on the hook group at these sort of valuations. Um, if I didn't have Boohoo, uh, I'd be buying the hook group. Um, but I think you've got to be careful because it is is a, a stock that um, can swing quite a bit and I think management haven't done the, probably the best things for shareholders historically which you've always got to be careful of but yeah it, it's an interesting one I've talked about that one before so this one Re Revolution Beauty I've talked about this one before on the channel and the key thing is you know all these beauty makeup uh, sellers all that you've seen them do is come out with positive news of like the sales are still really strong. So I can't see Revolution Beauty having anything different from what they have. Um, my key thing with Re Revolution Beauty is seeing if I can still keep up the uh, the growth, uh, the revenue growth that we're having. Uh, can they get towards profitability? And at the moment, they're still pretty much, you know, doing that at the moment. So yeah, it's looking it's looking really positive for the, the business. And since it's IPO'd, um, it's lost half its value. So this, to be honest with you, on the list is the one that I'm actually um, most interested in. Um, I, I think this could be a, a really good opportunity. Um, I would say that probably Revolution Beauty is like number one, and then I'd probably say it's Dunelm potentially after that. Uh, I think this could be an interesting one. Next one, same again, one that kind of divides uh, opinions, and that's probably why it's a bit more down than other ones, uh, is JD Weatherspoons. And JD Weatherspoons at the moment is getting absolutely slaughtered. A company that was, you know, 1,600 before the pandemic, um, you know, dropped huge in the pandemic, um, has a similar pattern to what, what Greg's did in that time. Uh, and then same again, peaked around April 2021, and since then down 50% nearly. Uh, and same again, it's basically the prices it was at nearly on the CV times. Um, they, well, apart from that really awful day, 20th of March, um, yeah. That, that would be the only way if you bought on that day you would be up on this position. So yeah, it's, this is complete CV lows. Um, and I, I don't I don't know if it deserves to be there. Um, you know, I look at JD Spoons. obviously they've had a few issues, the recovery's been a bit slower than what's expected. Um, but this year, it could go to doing well. You know, you've got um, hopefully a decent summer period coming up. Um, I, you know, it obviously might get affected by like inflation uh, issues a little bit. So the profit might not be as what it was like, you know, pre-CV, um, even that unless they're actually forecasting that, um, that might be a bit of an issue. But, you know, especially towards the back end of the year as well, you know, you're going to have, a, you know, the likes of a World Cup coming up as well. And we know how, how well like beer sales and Wetherspoons do in like World Cup periods and everything like that. So, yeah, I, I do look at this one, you know, it's a, you know, 800, 851 million market cap, it says uh, 927 here. Um, and you know, if you start running numbers on it and it does, you know, 50 million in profit potentially, it's, it's not too bad of a valuation. So, um, the only thing that always puts me off with, off with JDO Spoons is the balance sheet, to be honest with you. Um, it's, it's got a lot of debt on there, you know, it's got um, nearly the size of its market cap on the debt, which is the only thing that's really ever put me off this business. But one to think about. And the last one, uh, Taylor Wimpy. So I used to own Taylor Wimpy. I sold out um, for a little bit of profit, moved solely into Barrett Developments in the end, which is my house builder. But if I didn't have Barrett Developments, I'd be staring at Taylor Wimpy right now. Like it's, it's, a, it's a good house builder. Uh, they've got a good reputation. Uh, historically performed very well. Um, obviously house builders are always gonna trade at a lower valuation, but eight times sales is not bad at all. You pick up nearly 7% dividend yield at the moment. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's nearly, there's only a few times where it's, it was a bit lower in CV periods, but um, mostly from there, you know, it's, it's basically back down, you know, at CV levels. And the housing market's nowhere near where it was two years ago. Like it's on fire, it's still on fire. Sure, there's a few, uh, in, you know, inflation pressures that are in this sort of industry, um, but it's still doing very well. You know, it's, it's the housing market will still do well. And I know people talk about a slowdown, even though they've been talking about a slowdown since like, 
2021, you know, people said that when stamp duty was cut, that was going to be the end of the kind of, you know, housing market boom. A year later, we're still in a boom. People are still talking about a crash and, you know, we'll see if it happens. But, you know, the demand for houses in the UK is insane. It's, it's insane. Like, I know two people that are trying to buy houses right now. One of them has finally got a house after 15 viewings and one of them cannot get a house. Uh, and that's with what's going on in the world right now. So, you're sure, there might be some slowdown, but when there's so much of a backlog here, if there's even a bit of a slowdown, as soon as people sniff the opportunity of like a, a, a housing park, a housing market having a slight slump, it's still gonna be, it's soon gonna be filled up with that gap of demand of people trying to get on the ladder. So yeah, um, and I think especially like new builds are really popular with um, the, the younger generation that are coming through and buying the first home because of all the things that are in place to buy in new houses as well at the moment. So, uh, and I think they're preferred as well um, by a lot younger people. So yeah, I think if you didn't have a house builder, <laughs> I would be considering a house builder. And if I didn't have product developments, I'd be staring at this one uh, 100%. So yeah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed talking about these UK stocks to watch. Any that you feel that should have been on this list, stick them in the comment section. I'm always interested to hear your, you guys' opinion. Let me know if there's any in this list that you're interested in. And apart from that, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you on the next video.